Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make the blue spirit mask from Avatar. Recently, I've been re-watching Avatar The Last Airbender with my kids, and I've been looking around the entire time to find a prop from the show to make. We got to the episode where the blue spirit shows up, and I immediately decided that this was the thing I wanted to make. This is the mask of the blue spirit. Now, this is a cartoon, so there's not a whole lot of reference to go off of, but I did find some art online from the original character sheets, both in this form and in some sketches, and so I want to use those just try to make up the mask on the fly out of some foam. I'm gonna be starting with the life cast I have of my head, but you could just use a styrofoam mannequin head and that would work just the same. If you're gonna be making a mask that needs to fit around the specific contours of your head, Evil Ted Smith has a fantastic video about making a pattern. You can use aluminum foil and duct tape to make a pattern around your head and then transfer that onto foam. But in the case of the Blue Spirit Mask, it's actually not like that. This is more of a plate that wraps around the front of the face but stops about right here. So to do that, I'm actually gonna take a big piece of foam and start to form it around the front of the face just to get kind of the bowl shape and then we'll go from there. Using the heat gun, I got this to kind of bend around the shape of the head. And if I release the tape, it's gonna pop back a little bit. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that I can go ahead and get this top to round over the top of the head a little bit. If you look at the picture here, the bottom has kind of a flat chin, so that'll be okay. But I need this part to collapse and lay flat. So to do that, I'm actually gonna take a knife and make a slit up through here, and then start to be able to fold these pieces over, taking away material so that I can get them to meet up. If I do this wrong, I may end up just having to start over, so I'm gonna take it slow and make small cuts. It definitely doesn't have exactly the right shape yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this seam together with some barge cement, just so I can start to get the dome, and then I'll probably have to end up shaping it a little bit more, possibly even cutting this open again and reclosing it up. But for now, I wanna go ahead and try to get it connected. I made some progress, but it's just not right. I did figure out that I don't have this going back quite far enough. The curvature here is not really right to the picture. So I'm gonna start over, use basically the same process, try to get closer to the outside shape, and then I'll show you where I end up. Here's where we're at. It's not perfect, it's not even good, but I think it's a good start. So I still need to make the back of this flat and I need to curve this down a little bit, but adding the two slits instead of one actually made it a lot better to fold over the brow. Eventually I'm gonna need to cut out the eyes and the mouth, but I wanna make sure that I get them in the right place. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making some of the details that go on the front of it, and that'll help me figure out exactly where to cut those holes. This thing's absolutely gonna to continue to change and mold a little bit as I add stuff to it and try to make it fit. And I think the first step there is actually to go ahead and cut the hole for the nose so that this can fit onto the life cast that I have in the correct place so that the nose doesn't push the whole thing out. From there, we can start adding details.
I took the template for the brow that I made and traced it on this paper along a center line for where the eyes and the center of the face were and then started trying to sketch out the rest of the pieces based on this image. And I learned really quickly that this is a two dimensional image that's supposed to represent a three dimensional object, meaning that it's already wrapped around. I learned something really cool through doing this. This looks a lot wider than this image is gonna be, but I realized that this is actually a two dimensional drawing of what's supposed to be a three dimensional shape. This is a two dimensional drawing that will eventually be a three dimensional shape, meaning that once I get this thing cut out, it's gotta be wrapped around and it's gonna become more narrow. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep this use this half to mirror over here, trace it out, and then cut out these different pieces and start making templates out of them. It's not gonna be a perfect match to this original artwork, but I'm gonna do my best. Got all these pieces cut out and they turned out pretty good. I am gonna actually have to redo a couple of them. I realized that the mouth is a little bit too big. The eyes kind of have a little bit of an angle to them where I had the blade tilted by accident. So I'm gonna have to redo those, but that's easy enough. But the big one that I was actually worried about was this one and this turned out great. I took it to the sander and smoothed out some of the outside edges that you're really gonna see and I held it in place and it looks really cool. So next up, I'm gonna recut those other pieces, clean up all these edges and then we can start actually placing it on the mask. I spent some time working on all these pieces. I got the eyes recut. I got all of them sanded and smoothed out on the outside edges. And I hit all these pieces with a heat gun to seal up the surface. I even cut out a little bit of an area behind the nose so that my actual nose can fit in there when this goes in place. And I used some quick seal on the seams up here to try to smooth out that transition between the two pieces. I'll probably have to do a little bit more of that as I continue on and get closer to paint. But now it's time to take some barge and put all these detailed pieces on the front of the mask. I got all the barge put on both of these surfaces and now it's dry and tacky, so it should stick together really well. I do need to get some new barge though. This is way thicker than it should be. You can get some thinner, but I don't have any. Anyway, I also kept some tape on the mask to make sure that it's kind of more rounded and not trying to flatten out while I put these things on. Eventually, there will be a strap in here that will go around the back of your head to hold it more in this shape. I'll go ahead and stick these things on and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that I've got all the pieces on here, it's starting to look really cool. And I'm trying to figure out the mouth because I actually made this to go on top of the surface, but then realized that that wouldn't make sense for the teeth to be on top of the face. So they need to actually be back here. So right now I'm taking this template that I had made before and I'm gonna trace it and then enlarge it. And this enlarged piece on the top and the bottom will give it something to be able to glue to the inside of the mask so that the teeth can be inset a little bit. Not entirely sure that that's gonna have the right look, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I held this piece up behind the mask and then marked the opening and then drew on the teeth so I could see where they're gonna be. I don't actually wanna cut any of this out, but I do wanna score along the lines of the teeth and around this empty area in the middle of the mouth. Then we're gonna hit it with a heat gun and that makes all those score lines open up a little bit. So it'll add some detail to this section and then we'll go ahead and glue this in place.
I'm going to wait to glue that panel with the teeth in last after it's painted. I figured it'd be easier to paint that rather than trying to reach in here and paint all the individual pieces. But before I can start doing any painting, I still have a few more things I need to do here. I need to make some teeth stick out of the corners of the mouth and I need to create these pieces along the sides and the top. I'm just gonna cut those out of flat foam and then glue them onto this back face that I created and then this thing should be ready to plasti dip. I got one of these cut and fit and I'm going to flip it over and then trace it so that the flat side of the foam will be on the same front face of both of these pieces even though they're mirrored. Those teeth and the inner teeth are gonna be added at the end, but I went ahead and just shaped them just to make sure that they looked okay. And even though this whole thing's not perfect, I'm really liking where it's going. So next up, I need to seal the foam. I'm gonna use Plasti Dip for that. So I'm gonna spray everything down with Plasti Dip, then go back and spray everything blue to match the artwork. I'll probably do all the white painting by hand, but we'll see when we get there. And here's the finished mask. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with how it looks next to the artwork. Although there are, of course, several things that I would like to do differently if I were to make another one. The big one is that he doesn't really have a nose. I was kind of paying attention to the overall shape of this without really thinking about the fact that it doesn't come off in a three-dimensional fashion like it would if it were made in real life. But overall, it's got the right look. It generally looks like the right character, so I'm pretty happy with it. Another big thing that I would do differently is to paint these pieces separately. I thought I was saving myself time by gluing them together and then painting the white, but it would definitely have a better finish to it if I were to paint all the white pieces before gluing them on to the blue backing. I also just used the paints that I had on hand, which means that the blue is really glossy and the white was super glossy too. I had to go over it with primer to get it to dull out some. But overall, it looks pretty cool. I'm happy with it. I can wear it, I can see through it, and there's a little hole right in here so I can actually breathe through the nose area as well. One thing I thought about doing for this video was making the swords and the scabbard that go with this character. I decided not to do it in this video, but if you think I should make that in a future project, let me know down in the comments. In fact, if this gave you some ideas for a project that you could make or maybe you learned a technique, I would love to hear about it down in the comments below. We've also got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, you should do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Go through the opening in the, in the, in the mask. <clears throat> if I were to ever make another one, I want to point that out. I really didn't think about it from the side. This piece, uh, how do I even say that? Who's calling me? Stop calling me. Based on these images. Okay.